Hello friends, welcome to Code Semantic and welcome to the new tutorial of Entity Framework 6 in .NET. The prerequisites for this tutorial are C Sharp Programming, C Sharp Collection, then C Sharp Language Integrated Query that is Link and as well as you should be familiar with Microsoft SQL Server Database. Now let us see what is Entity Framework. So Entity Framework is an object relational mapper, the short form of it is ORM and it enables the .NET developers to work with database using .NET object. It eliminates the need for most of the data access code that developers usually need to write. So before using entity framework, we generally use ADO.NET technology for database handling. Okay, And there we have to write lots of code and that code is redundant also. Okay, So this part is totally eliminated in entity framework. Now as we move further, definitely I will explain all this concept practically also. Now one more thing about Entity Framework is that it is an open source ORM framework for .NET application. Now what is, uh, what is ORM framework? Let us see it. So ORM is a tool for storing a data from domain objects to relational database. This domain object is what? It is nothing but a classes that you created in your application. Now what this tool does? It will store the data from your object to your relational database like Microsoft SQL Server and all this process is done in an automated way without much programming. Now ORM includes three main parts. First one is domain class object, second one is relational database object and third one is mapping information on how domain objects map to relational database objects means basically domain class objects means nothing but your classes whereas relational database objects are nothing but your tables views stored procedure and mapping information means which table is mapped to which classes or which class is mapped to which table that is nothing but a mapping information now ORM allows one more thing it allows us to keep our database design separate from our domain class design and this makes our application maintainable and extendable and it automates the standard crude operations also that is create read update and delete so that the developer doesn't need to write it part write this part manually okay now why we need to use entity framework basically the aim of entity framework is to increase the developers productivity by reducing the redundant task of persisting the data used in the application so task of per persisting data are insert update delete so all these operations are done by entity framework automatically so that user can or developer can focus on business logic so in this way it increases the developers productivity now how entity framework works actually it saves the data stored in the properties of domain classes and also retrieves the data from the database and convert it to the domain class object automatically okay means all the data from the properties of classes is taken and then after stored to the database and when data is retrieved from the database it is automatically converted from database to your domain class object. Now you can say it is an enhancement to ADO.NET that gives developer an automated mechanism for accessing and storing the data in the database. So when we learn this part practically, definitely you will agree that it is an automated mechanism. Now where your entity framework fits? Basically your entity framework fits between your database and business logic layer. So nothing but it, you can say it is your data access layer where your entity framework fits. Now, main, there are main two classes in entity framework. First one is context class and another one is entity class. So you can say in general, you can say context class represent your database whereas entity classes represent the tables. So context class is very important part of entity framework. It is also called as bridge between your domain classes or entity classes and the database. Okay, domain or entity classes are just synonyms. So domain or entity classes means the classes in your application. Okay, so context class is an interface between your entity class and the database. 
now this class is derived from db context class now if your class is derived from db context class it is called as context class in entity framework so the context class is used to query or save the data to the database as well as it is also used to configure your domain classes database related mapping change tracking setting transactions etc and we are going to see this part practically basically configuring domain class means what you are specifying the primary key you are, you are specifying the foreign key you are specifying the column width you are specifying the column name all these things are nothing but configuring your domain class and all these things can be defined in context class now the next important class is entity class now as i said entity class represent the database table and each context class includes entity set of type db set t entity so t entity means this is nothing but a entity class name this is actually a generic property and it includes all the properties it is sorry it includes the properties for all the entities that you have in your application and it is very compulsory or you can say it is mandatory to have a properties of db set for each and every entity in your application now this db set class represent an entity set that is used for create read update and delete operation now let us see few more things about entity class so your entity class contains two types of properties see basically entity class is nothing but a plain dot net class okay and as you know dot net class has properties method constructor etc etc right but generally entity class has constructor and properties only it do not includes other methods so there are basically two types of properties first one is scalar property and another one is navigation property so the scalar property actually stores the data and you can say one property maps to the single column here in your database table whereas the navigation property represents the relationship to the another entity so basically it is used to define the relationship between your entity as we define the relationship in in our database so again there are two types of navigation properties that is reference navigation and collection navigation depending upon the association between the entities that is one to many many to many one to one etc again we are going to see this part practically so at that time i'll explain you what is reference navigation and collection navigation now again there are two types of entity first one is poco entity and another one is dynamic proxy also called as poco proxy so poco entity is nothing but plain old clr class so you might think this word little bit complicated but basically just remember that any plain c sharp class is nothing but what poco entity okay nothing special in it see poco class is the class that doesn't depend on any framework specific base class it is like any other normal class which which is why it is called plain old clr objects whereas dynamic proxy class is created at run time and it is created for your poco entity and it is like a wrapper class of poco entity now why this dynamic proxy class is needed basically dynamic proxy entities allows lazy loading and automatic change tracking now lazy loading means what as i told you there is navigation property it defines the relationship between your multiple entities so whenever we are reading a data from one entity and if that entity is related to the another entity and suppose i want to read that data of another entity also okay so it will be read later whenever required that is called as lazy loading lazy loading and automatic change tracking means what whenever your your whenever the state of entity get changed means your entity state or your entity is modified your entity is deleted a new entity get added so all this change tracking will be done automatically if you have a dynamic proxy class but as i said you do not have to create dynamic proxy class it is created run time but for that you have to take care of something some 
some requirements while defining the POCO class. Okay, so whenever you define the POCO entity properly according to the requirement of dynamic proxy, then only your dynamic proxy entity is created at runtime. So let us see that requirements. So your POCO entity should make the following things to become the POCO proxy. So it must be declared with a public access. It must not be sealed. It must not be abstract. Then each navigation property must be declared public and as well as virtual. Each collection property means each navigation collection property must be of type I collection. It cannot be I list or I numerable. Even it cannot be of type list T. Okay, then proxy creation enable proper option must not be false in the context class. So basically it is true, by default it is true, but just to be on safer side, please check that the proxy creation enabled option is not false. So if all these requirements are met, then only POCO proxy class will be created at runtime and you will get a facility of lazy loading and automatic change tracking. We are going to see both the concept practically. Now, entity framework can be used in following scenario. First one is database first, core first, second one is core first and third one is model first. So let us see this scenario in detail. See, when you use database first approach, if you already have an existing database or you want to design your database ahead of other part of the application, in that case, entity uh, database first approach is used. Now here, what is the role of entity framework? Entity framework will create a domain classes from the database if database already exists. Now the second approach is whenever you want to focus on domain classes and then you want to create a database from your domain classes you will use code first approach so here you have to create a domain classes first you have to define all the required properties then their navigation or relationship and then after what entity framework does it will create database from these domain classes now the last one is model first approach in model first approach we generally take a help of visual designer where we define the class diagram for the different different entity we define the class diagram including the different different entities and relationship among this entity now what is the role of entity framework here entity framework will fetch this design and according to that it will create database and as well as domain classes okay now to use entity framework in in your application you have to install the entity framework and it can be installed via new get package manager okay so you can use following command to install entity framework that is install dash package entity framework so it will install the latest version of an entity framework in your application and all these three approach that i discussed here that is model first code first and database first all we are going to see in detail in separate video so i hope you enjoy this video in next video, we will see database first approach first and then we will cover rest of the approaches. So thank you.